Great. So as far as the basic needs program, y'all touch a lot of people. How did uh, COVID kind of uh, impact the way you guys were able to help people? And, and what kind of resource were you guys during COVID? You know, we provided food. Uh, we had a resource for people who, if they needed um, um, an air mattress, you know, things like that. And you had some, because you have some families where, you know, the people did they were they didn't have jobs they they couldn't get unemployment so now you're moving in with your grandmother or your mother and dad with your children and they may not have you know beds or mattresses or bedding that type of thing so wow. we we just try to keep our ear to the ground and see what people need and if we can we just try to we try to provide it welcome to the pulse project Pandemics had an effect on everyone, whether it's physical health, mental health, effects of being isolated, financial stress, and more. This project's designed to show you the resources you have available to help you move forward during these tough times. Welcome to the Pulse Project. It's been brought to you by Bank, Community Development Partnership, and Witty Media. We are the Franklin Center of Beaver County. These are some of our department heads. And I'm Dr. Cheryl King. I am the executive director of the Franklin Center of Beaver County. Okay. Mr. Sean? Yes, my name is Sean Owens. I am the director of the Men and Boys Initiative of the Franklin Center of Beaver County, as well as I serve as the property manager as well. I'm Susan Smith, and I manage the Nearly New on the Avenue program, which is clothing for people in need in the Beaver County area. Oh. Hello, I am Tina Price Jeans. I am the Deputy Director as well as the Education Director of the Franklin Center. Okay, all right, so well, man, thank you guys for uh, coming here today. My name is Seth. I'm working with uh, Community Development and uh, Black Action Network Community, just letting lower to moderately income families and community members know what resources they have available. It's also small businesses as well. Um, and that's why I wanted to interview you guys. You guys are doing a, a lot of great things. First thing, I, I kind of want to get into the history. Um, can you kind of explain to me where the Franklin Center came from, like how it came about? Okay, you know, the Franklin Center, Seth, was, um, it was established in 1984 as a result of the collapse of the steel industry. Um, we actually came out of academia. We came out of the University of Pittsburgh School of Social Work. There was someone named Professor James Cunningham, and he had a master's degree class uh, in social work, and they wanted to target various communities that they felt would suffer greatly uh, due to the collapse of the industry. And as we know, overnight, almost 14,000 people were uh, out of work. Right. And so uh, they came here. They chose Aliquippa. And at that time, we were, we were named the Aliquippa Alliance for Unity and Development. And they were looking for various uh, community members who were active in the community and who were influential. And one of those uh, persons was Lorenzo Williams, who was our first chair, and I say our first founder, if I can put it like that, if okay. you want to say it. But there were others involved as well. And so uh, the, the goal of it was to make sure that those who had gotten, um, had lost their jobs, that they were and their families were would be able to survive. So we were supposed to, at that time, help to spur economic development uh, and offer programming, much like our basic programming that we have uh, today. Uh, we served Aliquippa, the 15001 zip code, which was Aliquippa Center and Hopewell Townships. So uh, from there, our footprint over the years has enlarged you know, and uh, we serve the whole Beaver County community now. Good. Huh? So when you said uh, those basic programs, those basic needs assistance? Yes. Okay. Uh, Can we talk a little bit about what those are? Sure. Like rent and utility assistance. And Susan over here can talk about Nearly New on the Avenue for people who are in uh, transition. Um, and we also do other... I will say unofficial or supplemental programming. Uh, you know, we partner with 412 Food Rescue. We especially did it during the beginning of COVID because, you know, we didn't, the whole food thing, right. you know, people laid off from jobs and, you know, jobs shut down and whatnot. And, and we tried as best we can to just meet the needs of our 
community, I'll say the Beaver County community. Um, and our mission is to facilitate life-changing opportunities for uh, our neighbors, including the low income, the underserved, and those in need. And Susan, do you want to talk about? Um... Sure. Uh, nearly new on the avenue is clothing for men and women. And we provide uh, uh, wardrobe assistance for people who are transitioning back into work. Good. And um, also, the basic needs of the community as a whole. We have, uh, we have some marginal folks around here, and what we do is we provide vouchers to the organizations that serve the community. They determine the need. They determine who needs our help, and then they come to me with, for their clothing. Okay. But we also do emergency assistance. In uh, uh, a great example, yesterday I had a couple that was, their house burned down, and they didn't have anything to wear. So uh, they showed up, and we made sure that they had enough clothes to get them through until they could get back on their feet. Wow, that's great. So how do people uh, get involved with this? If someone's going through something, is there forms they fill out? Is it just a phone number? Like, how do, how do we get well, in contact? Well, there's a phone number. I have a, we have a Facebook page as okay. well. And um, I should say also, we're completely reliant on donations. Okay. So we're always seeking uh, those gently used pieces of clothing that people might otherwise throw away. Um, we can certainly put them to good use here. And do you have like a bin or something, or do they come when you're open? How do they just come when I'm open? Just come whenever you're or open. When the, okay. the, the building's open. I mean, okay. I, well, they've left them out in front of the door as well. I'm not too fussy, really, but we prefer that they come when right, the doors right. are open. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So as far as the Basic Needs Program, y'all touch a lot of people. How did uh, COVID kind of uh, impact the way you guys were able to help people? And, and what kind of resource were you guys during COVID? Actually, I thought, you know, my thoughts is that we were a, a, a great resource. Like I said, we... You know, we had we, of course, the governor ordered people to shut down, right. order as we know, and you know some of our people work from home, and there are other other uh, of our staff who, you know, they can't perform their jobs from home, so you know, unfortunately, they weren't able to work during that time, but um, you know, we provided food, uh, we had a resource for people who, if they needed um, um, an air mattress. You know things like that. You had some because you have some families where you know the people did they were they didn't have jobs they they couldn't get unemployment. So now you're moving in with your grandmother or your mother and dad with your children, and they may not have you know beds or mattresses or bedding that type of thing. So right. we we just try to keep our ear to the ground and see what people need, and if we can. We just try to we try to provide it, and you know, we, of course, you know there was a moratorium as far as rent and utilities, and we were trying to encourage people to, as best you can, because sooner or later you still have to pay, right. you know, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, pay pay as much as you can with your rent and your utilities, and um, you know that that program we uh, we kept open at that time, so we really just tried to be whatever we could be the best way that we could if we found out that people had certain needs. All right, okay, okay. Yeah, um, I was looking into, you know, of course, you guys before the interview, man, you guys are really inspiring because not only do you have the basic needs, but you guys have expanded. And um, one of the things I try to always do as far as giving back to my community's financial literacy, just trying to expose my community to new things. And you guys are doing that. I've seen uh, the annual workshop and the lemonade Das, can you can you break that down? Because I, I think that that's tremendous. How long has it been going on and what all is involved with that? So, can you hear me? All right. Yep. So, um, I don't, I came in um, when business camp was going on. So, that was over 10 years ago. Okay. We added Lemonade Day probably about nine years ago. Um, and that is just the lower level. It's the elementary level of entrepreneurship. Biz camp is more of the intermediate level where we start from maybe like ages 11 on up to 18. And then Lemonade Day, they go as young as eight years old to 10 years old. And so what we do is we teach them how to come up with a um, 
basic business plan mm -hmm. and a product and um, they sell that product, including lemonade. We use lemonade as our foundation. So they're able to pick any type of lemonade. So they can sell lemonade plus another product. Okay. So not only do they come up with their um, specialty lemonade, but they also come up with the product that they would like to sell. And so at the end of it, they have to give 10% to a charity mm. and then they keep the rest for themselves. And as far as biz camp, biz camp, they come up with a, um, we work throughout the years that they will have a final business plan to where they're able to execute that business after they leave our camp. And um, so they are able to come up with their product. They're able to sell it. They're able to come up with their pitch. They're able to um, determine what they're going to make, what they're going to lose, how they're going to give it out, all those different things. And they sell theirs and they also have to give to a charity as well. That's not required in the program, but that's something that I want them to understand that they need to give back to someone or something. And then they're able to keep the rest of the money for themselves. Right. That's fire, man. And I, I, I think the, the world needs to hear about this, especially our communities around America, because I think it could solve a lot of our issues from crime, selling drugs, feeling like sports and mm -hmm. entertainment is the only way. Like this really exposes them to not only how to come up with a plan, but how to execute mm -hmm. it, you know, give you a little taste yeah. of that nervousness that comes with it, man. Right. So big, big up, man. Hats off to you guys. You said it's been going on for 10 years. Yeah, I know I've been here for almost 10 years, so it's been going on. It was going on before I came. Okay. Um, actually, my daughter, um, Taja, she um, was involved in it. She was selling keychains and photos and frames, and um, she was able to travel to New York. She was, like, um, considered one of the entrepreneurs of the year. And um, so it's been going on for quite a while. They have competed in New York. Mm -hmm. They've done so many different things with Nefty. And um, where all type of youth from all over the world come and they compete, they give, they pitch, they have judges mm. and um, they're able to win funds to expand their business. Like a shark so, tank. Yeah, there you go. Okay. And um, they have been doing this for a long time. We just expanded it in our area to, you know, expose our children. And right now, because of COVID, um, the hustle is major, right? Mm -hmm. So they know how to grind. They already know how to, to survive. So we want to teach them how to sustain right. and to be content mm -hmm. and, you know, to keep the flow, not just spend, you know, but apply it in different areas and make money as well. So um, that's what they did. We had, some kids made some money, that's like $400 or more. <laughs> okay. They are, yeah. they are little sharks. I say, you know, when they have the market day, I tell every adult, bring lots of money. <laughs> if you don't want to be broke, don't bring any money because <laughs> you will. And by the time you go through the whole, uh, through the whole marketplace, and what I really like about it, Seth, is that, you know, a lot of times when you have uh, disadvantaged uh, populations or low income populations, uh, um, we don't have options, you know, we, mm -hmm. the, you mentioned sports, uh, you know, that's the only way out is to, you know, play sports. Maybe you, you know, I can do better playing sports, but you know, you, you, you give people an opportunity that you can be an entrepreneur, you can go to college, you can mm -hmm. do a trade and you can play sports. It's not just one thing, you know? So I like the fact that our education programming really provides opportunity and options and 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 get those young minds in a position to say you know what entrepreneurship or because we do stem programming and all of that type of stuff as well mm -hmm. uh, food science you know um, but you know to say you know what maybe at an early age I could start thinking about how I can secure myself financially so that I can have a financially stable family in the future, All right. you know, and, and so those are those key things that other populations are able to link into because they know people and people that mm. their parents know, maybe business owners and, and, you know, they place them there for an internship and, you know, we don't have it as much in low income communities. Right. So we just want to let kids know that you do have options. Right. And uh, that's what I love about the program and what Tina's doing 
with the uh, with our education program. Yeah, I love that those, uh, like how you said, you know, they get to meet other people because I think even for those of us who might have chose the entrepreneurial route, the patience that it takes to be able to grow, a lot of us don't have that because we think that struggle means yeah. we need to go get it quick. And a lot of us end up, you know what I'm saying, turning the crime to try to put it into the business and that never ends up working, working out. So that's definitely dope. I heard you mention options and STEM and some other things. Can we? Can I hear some more about these other programs that come along with all of the the youth uh, education you guys got? Sure. So um, we have several different camps going on in the summertime, um, and we offer STEM um, culinary camp and um, this camp lemonade day and green team. So. Um, we have STEM, which is, you know, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. And so we just pick um, a STEM theme and they run off of that, you know, um, whatever it is that we decide to choose. We have chosen um, technology. Um, one time they have built their own computers. We have um, chosen um, health, you know, things where they've able to um, experience and um do some type of scientific experiments. Um, we've had people come in, they have dissected lungs, all those different things that we have. It's a lot of hands-on with um, science. Um, we have our culinary camp. We have Chef Knight, she actually flies in um, and spends the summer with us. And they spend five weeks learning how to cook all over the world, but yet talking about how ingredients come together. What does that look like scientifically? Um, what mixes, what doesn't mix? What happens if you do this? This can explode. Um, the, the bread will go flat, anything that you can think of. So it's an educational experience as well as learning all over the world where they have to pinpoint um, culture, climate, um, what goes on, what are what, what do they do over there? What are some of the things that they have done in that country? And they bring that to the table where they do reflections and different things like that. We have green team. That's more of our outside um, camp where we teach them about green. Um, this year was about survival. You know, what happens if we have um, a, um, a world emergency. So they're able to build tents, they're able to um, survive life, water. Um, we actually went on a two-day camping trip and, you know, it was an experience. And so, <laughs> <laughs> that. Um, and so um, uh, that is Green Team. And then you have our Biz Camp and Lemonade Day. And that was what I shared earlier. So we're quite busy in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, we also realized that um, during um, this year was a little different. We realized that um, a lot of our children needed to reset based upon COVID. Mm -hmm. You know, this was like the first full year um, being in school. And what does that look like? So, of course, you experience um, behaviors and different things like that, but not negative. So we had to reset. You know, we had to talk about connection and relationship and what does that look like and how do you respond to, you know, situations and how do you go back? So it's not just so much of educational. We do a lot of the mental and um, a lot of cultivating um, some of the emotional needs that the children have um, from trauma to different things like that, as well as educating them so that they're able to move forward in whatever it is that they want to do in life. That's great, man. So what 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 ages do you have to be? Where are you, where are you from and how do you sign up? So listen, you could be from anywhere. Okay. You could come all over. The problem is, is you got to get here. So right, if you right. know anybody who want to donate for transportation to bring the kids, right. that's a shout out right there. Right. Please <laughs> donate to the Franklin Center. Okay. However, um, all are welcome um, and um, all over the county. However, um, we um, service a lot of our kids within like um, Aliquippa, some from Rochester, Ambridge, um, those that can get here, you know, mm -hmm. um, and um, what was your other question? I'm too busy saying the commercial. Age, how to sign up, <laughs> okay. how much, if there's a price. Yeah, yeah. So, no, actually, there's not a price. It's okay. free. How about that, right? Yeah. Um, so, some camps are charging right. a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, we are free and um, ages 8 to 18. So, we have camps for all ages. Um, and if you are a mature seven, I'll let you slide in. Okay. All right. All right. Before we move on to the uh, men and boys, as far as basic needs, the clothing program and the education program, what are some things out there that you need from the community? I heard you say uh, donation, transportation somehow. What are some other ways that people could donate, volunteer, get involved? What are you guys, what, what, what help clothes. do you guys need? Clothes. Need clothes. So clothes. clothes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Always a to me. Always. 
Always, always. Money. <laughs> okay. I don't want to say that. We need ducats. <laughs> we need mula. We need dinero. Uh-huh. We need, you know, money. No, nothing happens without money. Right. Uh, and we and we and and we. <laughs> We need financial uh, resources. Uh, you know, uh, we've been fortunate uh, with with groups around Beaver County, like uh, Community College of Beaver County. I mean, they always make sure any type of education thing that we have going on. They're, you know, they are always there to want to participate in a very active way. And, you know, there are just other groups, uh, you know, Children and Youth Services helps to fund our um, our education program and our Men and Boys Initiative. But we private donations are the donations that we'd like to have more of. Um, you know, if you if you look to see where you, uh, the foundation donations, we think that 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 you know they are they do all of whatever. But in a, in a if you have a pie, they're showing how much they donate. Uh, private donations is the bulk of what keeps organizations going, okay. and not 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 foundations. Um, you know, we've just been blessed to you know be able to get some funding from foundations and other other. Um, other resources like that, but we we could definitely use those, your nickels and your dimes. <laughs> Listen, at five dollars. This is what I always say. I say if you need five dollars for some gas and you can't find it from any anywhere, or from any of your peers, your neighbors, it may as well be five thousand dollars. Okay, mm. because it's all relative. And I like to say that when we talk, when someone says, you know, well, I could. We have some pe- some people, you know, they, they'll give like twenty five dollars a year. We are so grateful. We are so grateful because we could do something with that. That right. that can help. So, you know, five dollars, a buck, you know, anything, it adds up. Okay. I'd also like to add that partnering organizations, we can always use uh, more organizations that serve the needs of the community mm-hmm. um, that would like to uh, participate. <laughs> Oh, good, good. Participate in our in our voucher program. You know, they have their clients can come to us for their clothing. We're always looking for those folks as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, but, and, and, but, and see, volunteering and 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 stuff like that that's non financial helps us to leverage the resources that we have. You know, when you no no man is. Oh, I guess Elon Musk is an island. Okay, but, you know, if you have his money. But, you know, no man, no organization is an island. It used to be, you know, you you did your thing, they did their thing. It just doesn't work like that anymore. You you have to collaborate, and that's how you reach the greatest number of people. And when you collaborate and you partner, you know, we can fill in a gap that, this certain organization has in, in, in serving their population or whatever you you know when you partner of course you have shared you have shared vision there and shared mm-hmm. mission there but you know and, and then you have someone else who comes in and they will fill in a gap for us so we're able to leverage those resources through volunteerism and donations whether it's you know in kind donations or financial donations so you know just to be involved and to participate goes a long way and I would never want any volunteer to think that, you know, what they're doing is not worth anything. It is worth so nonprofits live because of volunteers. And people don't understand that except for the people who volunteer in nonprofits. So, you know, we don't turn you down. No. no. I hear we enjoy you. <laughs> we want you. We appreciate you. So Okay. All right, all right. Can we uh, discuss a little bit about the men and boys program? Like, what uh, where'd that come from? Like, what's the history behind that? Wow. So, um, my thought, my quick thoughts on that is, so I, I met Mr. Pettis about fourteen, fifteen years ago, um, and I approached him about using this room that we're sitting in, um to speak with some gentlemen about uh, a program called Why Not. Um, And Why Not was just a program um, out of Allegheny County um, that they approached me with to 
uh, just to have a conversation around uh, why not get married or why are you not getting married or you don't have to, but, you know, have you thought about it, right? So just talking to men about that um, because, you know, a lot of a lot of couples are running around uh, pretty much shacking up. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's be real about it, right? And, I mean, <laughs> they don't feel like uh, marriage is, is important. Right. And so um, that was um, something real at that time for – that program that they wanted to talk to people around the region. Well, with that being said, um, Mr. Pettis allowed me to use this room. Um, and then he, he talked to me one day. He said, I'm thinking about um, putting together a fatherhood program. Would you want to head it up? And I said, <laughs> immediately I said, yeah, but I was like, okay, what am I, <laughs> right. what am I about to do? You know, I'm um, just thinking about that. And uh, Mr. Pettis went, and put the uh, grant together and uh, got everything uh, situated and um, offered me a position here. Uh, and I think it was at a part-time at that time. And so um, that sort of birthed the uh, fatherhood initiative portion of it, of the men and boys initiative, uh, which I, I felt a neglect to say that the men and boys initiative is a... Um, Organization in short, just to help men establish a deeper connection with their children um, and assist young men um, in reaching their fullest potential in life. Um, and so uh, that's what we have grown into from that conversation with um, uh, Mr. Pettis or uh, at that time. Um, and since then, since 2009, 2008, 2009, um, it, it has grown tentacles, um, numerous tentacles um, as far as the uh, men and boys initiative uh, goes. Uh, we have uh, a portion of it where we, again, we assist men. Um, we assist them in, in, in some endeavors where they're struggling in life, uh, mm-hmm. right? Um, just making the right decision. Um, we operate off of referrals and walk-ins. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, if that was a question, <laughs> well, is I it, ran ahead. Is it like a one-on-one thing with individual men, or is there uh, things that you guys do as a collective? Like, Yeah, so we have um, actually uh, transitioned into a one-on-one um, via Zoom, via phone call. Okay. Uh, Lisper and myself, um, I, and I failed to mention um, the one person that has uh, been by my side for so long. Um that uh, has, he makes this thing go, um, you know, uh, Lisbeth is the one that makes it go. And um, in that one-on-one conversations with men um, and, the, and what we have with young men and young boys, uh, such as the young man you just seen walking around here, um, uh, you know, those type of interactions with them uh, to kind of help steer them in the right way, mm-hmm. put them on the right track or just begin to help them think differently, right? I mean, because some of us, we thought so one way for so long, we think mm-hmm. that's normal, right? And, right? and I am very guilty of that. And those are some of the things, uh, you know, that we do with the uh, Men and Boys Initiative. All right, especially, like, if you're talking mental health, you know what I'm saying? Because I think uh, as far as black men, we tend to not, and I'm not saying women don't do this, but I I feel like a lot of times we carry that, be strong, be strong, be strong, like almost as we have to compartmentalize everything. You know what I mean? And I think it's definitely important for us to focus more on mental health, let it out, talk to people, you know, seek therapy. I I think I need therapy. You know what I mean? I've come to that. My my sister came on one of our podcast episodes and I'm like, this is my sister. And she's making me realize right now, I got I got issues, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. she's she been with me my whole life, you know, and I'm just now realizing it. So that's uh, definitely um, dope to hear. Do you guys uh, got anything else going on that you want the public to know about? Absolutely. Our right. arts festival okay. is coming up. We, d- we didn't have it the last couple of years. This is our 27th, I believe, arts festival. We've been doing 27 years. It's called the Aliquippa Art and Music Festival. Uh, we're still looking for vendors. This is going to be, uh, we have a little shortened version this year. We usually run from like Thursday to, through Saturday, but we're doing, um, we're just going to do it on Saturday due to okay. COVID, you know, we're, and, and, and the hours are kind of shortened uh, from like 11 to, um, to 630. 
Um, but uh, it is the third, and it's right down here on Franklin Avenue in the uh, in the parking lot. We have that we have that urban feel. Okay. So in the in the city parking lot down there uh, next to Town Tower, uh, we're hoping we can go to the new park, but that depends on some some things that's happening down there. But uh, yeah, so we're gonna have the Bill Henry Band. We have Billy the Kid and the Regulators. We have comic Tommy, um, Tony Roberson. Uh, we have something, uh, we have, um, I forget, Coffee and Company, that's not his name. Uh, we are doing something that's called the Unknown Singer. It's almost like the Masked Singer. So okay. we will have certain people from all over the county uh, performing. Okay, don't judge us. Everybody won't be able to sing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the idea, the idea is for our audience to members to enjoy it and to guess because you will not see them guess. Who is singing? Okay. And you'll be able to win some prizes if you do really, really well. So, but we'll have a list, and everybody who's performing up there will be on the list, but we'll have extra people on there too, so they can't just like kind of eliminate them because you know you have 13 people singing, so right. you got 13 on the list. So, does, are they going to be anonymous? Nobody's going to know who Nobody's they are. Nobody's going to know. So, we won't know that your son's in there? Is he in? Is he gonna be in there? <laughs> <laughs> nah. Okay. All right, we can't. We can't mention that. We right. can't. No, we, we, we are not putting him in. <laughs> <laughs> that, boy, that boy can sing, man. He can, he can sing. It's okay. Gonna be, it's, it is going. It is really gonna be fun. Um. And and it's always a fun day. I mean, the last festival we we had in uh, twenty nineteen. Um, we had over 2,000 people attend. Okay. You know, and, and we, we're going to make sure we have our stations where people can sanitize their hands. Mm -hmm. we, we, we really want you to kind of stay in pods with who you come with. Right. But, we, you know, we can't control that. Right. We have food, uh, just wares, parade, um, you name it. Good. And you said September 3rd? September 3rd. September 3rd, okay. September 3rd. Have you uh, spoke with the uh, Genesis Collective, Pam and them? Pam, uh, Pamela Rossi. King. I do know Pamela Rossi. Yeah, you should reach King. out to her because she's doing a lot with the art. You know, might just be thank you someone to help partner with. You know, thank somehow. you. Didn't uh, know, didn't know she was doing art. Yeah. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, I have to reach out to her for something anyway. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> um, uh, yes, I will. I will talk to. I will okay. talk to Pam. Right. And if I could think of any other groups that could help with, you know, getting the, getting the word out. Thank you. Um, do you guys have a flyer or anything yet? Uh, that will be out this week. Okay. If you, As soon as you get it, send it to me. I, I can help sure you put together will. an ad with this or something. I Just sure. a little video that you could um, use. Um, any other programs, anything else going on that you guys want to let the people know about? You got anything going on? Or you want me to go? Thank you, ladies first. I appreciate it. That's what coworkers <laughs> are for. I appreciate you. Thank you. Um <laughs> <laughs> co-worker right there. So um, we have quite a few things that are coming up. We usually do um, Christmas on the Avenue. So, far, you know, that's further out. So we do that um, probably like the in November-ish, right before Thanksgiving, um, where everybody on Franklin Avenue come together. And we do like a little scavenger hunt, mine, where we go down there and we do the tree light up. Um, and then they go from each businesses and they give them a little activities, um, candy. And then we usually come to the broadcast and um, we raffle off where every child gets something. So we have bikes, toys, um, gift cards, whatever it is that you can think of. So everyone at Alacupa does that and we all come together. And we are doing that this year. And we also have what we call our um, Breakfast with Santa. We have not been able to come together because of COVID. So we have had families just sign up where they come in and we provide them with a gift card, a bag of toys, and breakfast that they can cook for their children okay. on that Christmas morning. That is dope. So we are also looking for donations for that as yes. well. That's always an opportunity um, to give and to give back. Oh, and we also give them a book as well. Okay. And, yeah. um, I, you know, and, and I think you also f I didn't mention our um, Thanksgiving. We used to have a community luncheon mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, like a couple days before Thanksgiving, that Monday before Thanksgiving, uh, where anybody could just, you know, walk off the street and come in for, it'd be like, it's like three hours, I think it is, and have a Thanksgiving, <clears throat> excuse me, have a Thanksgiving uh meal. And that is especially important for, for people who don't have shelter. Mm-hmm. 
you know, they're, you know, to, to just be able to sit down or people who are, who are elderly, maybe your children live somewhere else and you didn't make it, make it to their, they're not coming home and you're not going there or whatnot, but just people just coming together. And that's what we were doing for several years. And so, uh, since COVID and COVID has changed the world, has it not, Mm -hmm. uh, since COVID, uh, you know, we have, we give away, um, um, like, like, I, I don't know how you say it. Thanksgiving baskets, if we want to, mm, if we want boxes. boxes, you know. So uh, when we we find out that people are in need, like I said, people are doubling up now. You, you can't afford rent anymore, and we know that you know rent is high. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people may have had medical that there's stuff that they're dealing with. So you have families coming together under one roof, and you have extra mouths to feed, and some people can't feed them any from the get go. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, we also need donations for that too, to fill up with cranberry sauce and turkeys and stuffing and whatnot. And, and, and people can take it home and cook it and then just have that aroma coming through the house and feeling like family, you know. And that's, and that's our main thing really. You know, we, we, we do, we serve, but it's that whole thing where you can really try to make a difference and try in some type of way to help people to live according to their expectations. And that's really what quality of life is. It's all about quality of life here and us trying to just do whatever we can to supplement what they're doing. We don't do things for you. We help you to do things for yourself. And that, and honestly, that's what most people want. They just want to do it for themselves. True. And sometimes they just need to reach out and need a little bit of, you know, I need you to help me to navigate domestic relations. Can can you all do that? Or get me a help me get a provisional driver's license. Can you do that? Th- those things that maybe the public doesn't know how to do it, but we're there to try to fill in those gaps to help them, to help themselves. So. Um, we need donations for that too. I hear it. We always need donations, people. Okay, okay. Any any other programs? Any or any other news? Yeah, I was just going to add um, the non sexy thing that uh, the Franklin Center do, um, but that is uh, very essential um, and important to uh, Beaver County uh, Beaver Countyans and um, communities. We have um, residential. Um, and commercial rentals, mm-hmm. um, and office space that we do That's okay. sexy. have. That is. It's um, real sexy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so um, just letting the, the public know that we do have those spaces to offer people, and we have not uh, raised our rent in, uh, since I've been here. Uh, so what, right. 14, 15, I don't know, around that. I, I've never known our rent to have ever been, um, been raised. Okay. Um, so it's still the same. Um, it's for low income, so we're still looking, trying to look out for low income um, rental uh, uh, residents, um, as well as commercial. Uh, you will not find a commercial space uh, cheaper than what we offer uh, here in the Beaver County area. You will not find an mm-hmm. office space right. cheaper than what we offer. And in our, within our building here, we uh, offer office spaces where electric and uh, water and, uh, and um, those utilities are included. Um, so the mm. um, only thing that we have in addition is the phone service um, that we, we do offer at a, a, a small price, mm-hmm. <laughs> small price um, for the phone um, rental. But um, those are some, that was, I did want to um, get that plug in uh, yeah, because that's, I want that's, people that's to know sexy. we know have man? those. Yeah, that's that. <laughs> And I want to say, and John, just you know, is public. He does a very, very good job, very good job. managing our uh, our properties. It's not always easy, you know. And you know, tenants, commercial and residential, they we all have personalities, mm-hmm. you know. But but we have we have some good tenants, some good mm-hmm. some good residents. Uh, and Sean does. He's doing. He's been doing a great job. And I just so. want to say it publicly. Um, yeah. yeah. And 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 you know, there's a reason for those low. For the for those low rents, especially the commercial rents, uh, either in here or street side, uh, because we want people who maybe you're at, in your house in your basement doing hair, or doing nails, 
or you know you have a, a business you know you and you're just hesitant to come out of your house and to go into a commercial space so you know keeping those rents low helps to kind of incubate them right. you know when you're starting out you know that's the whole you know as we know you're trying to make money but it does take money to make money mm -hmm. and so we try not to be a, a the rents to be so heavy and a burden on fledgling businesses so that they can get a leg up and if you want a leg up i mean in this building is a great place to start it's a great place to start and you know you're not out of an arm and a leg and you can kind of you know develop your business without worrying too much about you know how I'm going to make you know $1500 rent you know right. which you know we don't we we don't do so um yeah so there's a reason for that man y'all got a lot going on man a lot okay big ups to y'all big ups to y'all anything else well the store is also a thrift store so okay. we sell stuff there as well Okay. At very reasonable prices, so that our our neighbors can dress well without breaking the bank. All right, yeah. mm. and we have great clothes. Believe me, the clothes are not your typical uh, clothes that you would just see, you know, in a thrift store. It's quality clothing, uh, modern clothing, right. you know, clothing that that any and everybody would want. So you can walk off the streets, yep. and Susan practically gives it away. I'll say that, <laughs> right. but that's all right. That's dope, man. I feel like, man, I, I've interviewed so many organizations at this point, and everybody's, like, serving the community in their own way. Is everybody connected? Because I interview Crossroads to Trails to... Uh, I, I think, you know, we've done um, a, a great job at starting to collaborate within our area. You know, we, um, we're we very connected to Aliquippa Impact. Okay. We're um, uh, also connected to the cafe. Um, and... Um, Franklin Avenue Development, um, and actually Trails and um, the Franklin Center will probably be doing something because we're going to be starting um, a program called Strong African American Families mm -hmm. Safe, and that is a seven-week um, program that's evidence-based to bring um, stronger relationships between African American families. Um, where we teach them problem solving and different things like that. So I think we're all working towards, you know, um, coming together even the more. Um, Sean has strong connections um, county-wise and, and different things like that. Yeah, I heard somebody call you the black mayor. <laughs> so, <laughs> Beaver County. <laughs> right. So, you know, he connects us. You know, that's my little side, little thing. You know, he, he connects us. Uh, you know that part. So, uh, right here we have um, <laughs> strong relationships with um, um, those. Um, even with the um, Christmas on the Avenue that we do, mm -hmm. um, that's with the City of Aliquippa, all the businesses along Franklin Avenue, and then also CCBC comes in, yeah. so. and they also donate as well. So I think like you, you doing this right, it gets the words out, mm -hmm. get the word out, and um, what I like to call synergy. Right. Um, and collaboration. Um, the more that, you know, we hear about each other, we can find how we can connect with each other. Right. You know, and not only that, just bring in referrals, you mm -hmm. know, and if we can't do it because we can't service everybody. Right. But this organization can service who we can mm -hmm. and they who they can't. The other one can. And I think us coming together and realizing that has been like phenomenal. Right. But it's just one day at a time because, right. you know, it has been silos. However, we are breaking that. Right. Yeah, I agree. And you know, I forgot to mention that we are the county's information and referral agency. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, when we don't know, we can find out. That, right. that that's for sure. You know, we try not to have somebody walk away with just a hard no. We, you know, no, we don't know, or no, you can't, or it's always you can try. We don't do that, but you can try to contact such and such and such and such and such. I think between the whole staff. Uh, I mean, they really have their ear to the ground. So between our, you know, with our entire staff, we can find out or know just about anything and everybody, right. which is which is great, which is great. And we get information fast uh, when you know things happen in uh, this community in the Beaver County community. Uh, we get that information fast, and we're always willing to help. So if you have questions about where you can find out this or that or this or that, call us. Okay. We'll try to, we'll, we'll, we'll try to help you figure it out. All right. Well, I thank y'all for 
doing this today, you know, sitting down with me right. and letting the people know what you got going on. I thank y'all for what y'all doing in the community as well. Um, you guys are really inspiring, just like everybody else, man. I, I appreciate it. You know what I mean? So thank if you. you guys got anything else or if you don't have anything else to say, we could uh, go ahead and wrap it up. Sounds good. Thank, right. you. Cool. thank, thank you. you. Thank 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 you. Thank